Hello, today we'll look at the causes of hyperkalemia. So hyperkalemia is a high level of potassium in the blood, which means that we have a higher level than 5.5 millimol per liter, because the usual normal level is between 3.5 to 5.5. And therefore, if you have anything higher than 5.5, that can, that can be a hyperkalemia. And we need to find out the cause if we want to treat this patient. And it, one thing to just mention before we start with the causes is that there can actually be no cause and the patient has hyperkalemia. This means that when we puncture the vein and we, we make, we make a too, too um, strong um, bl blood blockage here when we use a tourniquet, that can cause hyperkalemia itself because we destroy the, uh, the blood cells and then they release uh, the potassium into the blood and the uh, level of potassium is higher than it actually is. So in the body, for example, it's maybe normal level, but because we caused the trauma here, we, 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 we strangulated it too hard, then we destroyed some blood cells and then we have a higher level, a higher measured level in the blood. So that can be a very simple cause that, for example, the nurse or the doctor did. So please don't strangulate the vein so hard. Do it first, strangulate it, and then when you see the vein, then, Take, take it off, take it off, actually. Remember where, the, where, where, where this vein is, then puncture the vein without the strangulation if you can, okay? Good, the other, the other things that can cause uh, hyperkalemia are, for example, anything, we will divide them into two main groups, anything that can move potassium from the cell into the blood, or anything that uh, can cause a higher, no, a lower excretion of potassium from the urine, because the potassium is usually excreted in the urine. So these two main groups have to be seen, those that increase the transfer from po uh, potassium from cells to the blood, and those that decrease, so reduce the, re the excretion of potassium in the urine. Okay, and let's see one by one here. I have a list of many things. I will mention some of them, which I think are most important. So we will start with the release from the cells into the blood. Metabolic acidosis will cause this. So when you have a low pH in the blood, that will then cause that the cells move, that the potassium moves from the cell into the blood instead. Insulin deficiency. As we know, insulin wants to move potassium from the blood into the cell. That's the insulin, that's the mechanism that the insulin does. And if we have a low amount of insulin, then this will cause that the potassium instead gets out of the cell into the blood and then you get hyperkalemia. Also hyperglycemia. So in uncontrolled diabetes, where the glucose, the sugar is too high and the insulin level is too low, in these diabetic patients, you can see hyperkalemia. So it's a very uh, interesting connection. Hyperkalemia connected with uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Anything that causes trauma to the cells, as we said, or, or exercise that you do, you destroy the muscle cells because we know 98% of potassium is within cells. And if you destroy the cells, then the potassium gets released from the cell into the blood. So if you exercise too hard, or if you get a trauma, you hurt yourself and you destroy some cells, then all this will cause that the potassium is released into the bloodstream. Beta blockers. Why? Because not only insulin will want to move potassium from blood into the cell, also beta-2 agonists or beta-2 receptor uh, agonists. This means that molecules that activate the beta-2 receptors, there are receptors on cells. But if you have, if you, if the patient use, for example, beta blockers, because the patient has, for example, high hypertension, so high blood pressure, and the patient needs to take these beta blockers, this means that the receptors are blocked and therefore, instead of moving potassium into the cell, then it will be opposite. So beta-2 receptor agonists mean that they are attaching to the receptor and they are activating receptor. But beta-2 blockers or beta blockers are blocking the receptor, not activating it. So that means that the potassium will move into the blood instead, so from the cell into the blood. Uh, as, as the, the same as we had when we had a low level of insulin. Good. 
that's it. That was increased potassium release from the cells. These are the most important, I would say. Then we get to the excretion. So the urinary excretion of potassium is, is reduced. And therefore it means it keeps the potassium in the blood instead, instead of re releasing it. And when do we have that? We know that aldosterone is a molecule that, that loves to excrete potassium and loves to absorb sodium. So it will absorb sodium and will rele and release potassium. But if we have a low amount of aldosterone, then it's the opposite. That's the same thing as we had a low level of insulin. Insulin loves to put potassium from the blood into the cell. Aldosterone loves to excrete potassium in the urine. But if we have a low amount of aldosterone, which means it called, it's called hypoaldosteronism, it's a disease, then the potassium will be kept in the body and it will be too high of concentration and you get hyperkalemia. That's one thing, that we have a low amount of aldosterone, but also responsiveness of al to the aldosterone. So for example, the receptor that aldosterone uh, attaches to, if that is not responsive enough, we have a normal amount of aldosterone, but the receptor itself is, is not functioning. That can also then cause that the potassium will not be excreted and we keep it. Also, if we have a reduced amount of sodium and water into the distal tubules in the kidney, because if we have a reduced sodium and water, then the potassium excretion is not really functioning also. So you need to have, and this is called low effective arterial blood pressure because the, uh, the, the pressure in the kidneys are too low and then the secretion will also uh, get lower. And also, uh, now that we talk about kidney, let's mention the other cause, kidney disease. So any type of kidney disease, either acute or chronic kidney disease, both of these can um, severely reduce the potassium excretion. That's it. So let's conclude that, that we have either a measurement problem, which means this is called pseudo hyperkalemia, because it's not really hyperkalemia, it's, it's a problem when we take the uh, blood from the patient, or, or we have anything that moves potassium from the cell into the blood, which was low level of insulin, it was this metabolic acidosis, so the pH of the blood is very low. It was that the patient is using a lot of beta blockers and exercise or any trauma to the, to the patient muscles. Then we take the other causes, which were that we have a reduced uh, urine excretion, that was a low level of aldosterone, or that the responsiveness to the aldosterone is not good enough or that we have any kidney disease, acute or chronic kidney disease, or that this sodium and water uh, delivery to the tubules, to the kidney tubules, is too low. So we have a low effective arterial blood pressure. These are the causes. So I thank you very much for listening.